everybody. Great to see you tonight. Are you interested in learning more about making beautiful things and seeing some great heirloom sewing samples and learning more about how to um, use some great techniques in your own sewing space? If you are, then you're in the right place. I'm Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew.com. Welcome to the So Tell Me Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco show, where sewing enthusiasts gather to learn more about their machines and be inspired to sew more. So tonight I'm so excited to have a very, very good friend of mine on here to share her love of sewing with all of you and, and some of the absolutely beautiful, beautiful things that she's made. So I'm seeing we got a lot of people rolling in and that's great. We started just about right on time. So I'm glad for that. We had just a couple, couple little glitches to, to take care of. Um, and we got everything, everything ironed out. So very good. All is good. All is good. So anyway, I'm introducing you tonight to my good friend, uh, Janice Ferguson. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Janice for a minute here and then bring her and bring her on so that you can meet her. Um, Janice um, has been a friend of mine for a very long time, actually. We met in a brother class many moons ago when she was teaching uh, a beautiful, beautiful project, which you're gonna get a little peek at tonight. But Janice is really just um, so experienced in so many different things. She's a fellow brother blogger and sewing educator extraordinaire in my book. Uh, she earned her undergraduate degree in English um, and a master's degree in special education. And after a few years of teaching, she became a stay-at-home mom. She tells me she was raising her children, focusing on needlework, tending a vegetable garden, a backyard citrus grove, a flock of poultry, a rascally horse, and milk goats. Janice is passionate about needlework and has written extensively for So Beautiful Magazine and Creative Needle. Her projects have also been featured on the PBS Martha's Sewing Room Show. She's taught machine embroidery, heirloom sewing, quilting, English smocking all around the United States, Puerto Rico, and Australia. She creates unique needlework projects with an emphasis on high quality fibers relying on her strong educational background in heirloom sewing techniques. So without further ado, let me bring on my friend Janice. Hey, Janice. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Well, I want everybody here to give Janice a great big welcome. And please tell us all where you are coming from tonight, where you're watching from tonight. Janice, where are you at right now? I am in, I'm in Florida, uh, outside the land, Florida. In a little tiny community called Glenwood, we've got nothing but a post office and a church and my home place. So, little place. And do you still have a rascally horse and, and uh, goats? <laughs> <laughs> no, they have moved on. Now I'm dealing with rascally dogs and cats. So Okay. Well, that's really neat. It's um, I did, never really pictured you living in a, in a rural type environment. But once I started seeing a lot of the pictures you were posting... <laughs> And um, the beautiful lush foliage that you have, I'm always like, so like, oh, I wish I had a plant like that in my yard I could go take a picture of. <laughs> You've got some great, great scenery around you. All of Florida is gorgeous, though, and it's hard not to grow something beautiful because if you don't plant it, it's going to grow anyway, you know, so yeah, easy. You you got growing season uh, just mm -hmm. about year round there. I'm going to um, take a minute and, and welcome a few of our, our friends that are here. Everybody's saying saying hello. Let's see. We've got Arnell here, Star Raymond. Um, Janice is here. Connie is here from Colorado. Nightman is here from Debari, Florida. Debari? Debari, Florida? And does that sound familiar to you at all? Oh, that's where my church is and a lot of my friends. I see Marianne Gardner. She looks like oh. she's um, a friend. Um, my friend June is here. Um, Pamela is here. Let's see who I missed at the very beginning. Carla. Carla made it tonight. Carla is in the great state of Virginia in the beautiful spot 
known as Virginia Beach. So hello to everybody, my friends in Virginia Beach. Got quite a few really, really good friends there. Uh, let's see who else. Cindy. Cindy King is here from uh, Texas. Um, Beatrice is so excited, I hear. Beatrice is somebody special to you, right, Janice? Oh, my precious granddaughter, three and a half years old. Great well, joy in my life. She is excited to see you here tonight. So that is that is wonderful. Well, Kelly's here from uh, Louisiana, and Arnell is actually from Illinois. Jane is here from Pennsylvania. Wanda's here from South Carolina. Connie's here from Tennessee. Jackie's here from Oklahoma. Rhonda's here from wow. Central Texas. Clovis, hey Clovis from Indiana. We got we got just a ton of of great friends here. So tonight we're gonna just oh we're gonna have so much fun because we're gonna see so many beautiful things. Uh, I want to encourage everybody here in the chat if you're watching live to interact with each other and if we you know bring up some little topics of discussion be sure to share your thoughts with each other here and if you have questions um let me know it helps me if you put a cue in front of it that way i can spot it a little easier and i will try to catch all those if i miss something we'll definitely have some time at the end to answer questions right janice absolutely go ahead this is going to be a really really good time so i you sent me a lot of pictures so that's really going to help tonight so that we can see some of your beautiful things uh, up close and um, learn some of the stories behind them because I know you got stories behind a lot of your <laughs> <laughs> a lot of your projects. But speaking uh -huh. of stories, why don't we start by just like I'm gonna just ask a little bit about where in the world you got started sewing? What was your um, sewing influence? Who 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 taught you how to sew? Well. It's funny. Uh, my mother could have taught me how to sew, but she didn't. I, I had no interest at all in sewing. I mean, she sewed me beautiful things. And I thought, why reinvent the wheel? You know, I had somebody doing it for me. I didn't have to outsource to China. I mean, my mother could do it. And my best friend, her mother made, she knitted beautiful things. So she wanted to learn to sew. So on Saturday morning, she would come to my house and my mother taught her to sew. And I went to her house and learned how to knit. And so I really didn't learn how to sew until I had, my daughter was born. And there's a wonderful place in Orlando, the sewing studio. And um, I wanted to learn how to, I did learn how to smock. And then I would just hand the smock, my mother would pleat it, cut it out and hand it to me and I would smock it and I'd hand it to her and it'd come back on a hanger, you know, all sewn together. But then I went to a seminar, uh, a Smocking Arts Guild seminar on uh, all kinds of things. And I had already taken a, a course in uh, heirloom sewing, a summer job, because their teacher had gone away to teach smocking, but she got a 30% discount. I thought, whoa, lucky Mary, oh, you know? That, so then they said, well, would you like to teach heirloom sewing? That was big, you know? So I said, yes, I'll do that. So they offered me the job to teach heirloom sewing. So that was the start, really. And, and then after that, I met Martha Pullen at a Saga seminar. And then she asked me to teach at her first uh, Martha Pullen school. And the first thing she asked me to teach was a, a, a lace portrait collar. And I said, well, Martha, I've never made one. She said, for heaven's sakes, it's three months away. You can learn in that amount of time. <laughs> so I did. That sounds like Martha. For those of you that don't know Martha Pullen, I oh. put it here in the chat for those of you that do. But uh, Martha's still still around, but she oh, yes. really pioneered the, the grand love of heirloom sewing across the sewing world because she brought it to people not only through her magazine, but through her books and the television show. And I know you made mm -hmm. samples for for the television show. I had the privilege of doing a few of those too. And um, there are just many, many people that really got the bug for uh -huh. sewing and then learned all the details, um, you know, from, from something that came through the line of Martha Bullen. But my, what an honor to be asked to teach there. Um, no pressure. Oh, yes. Three well. months to prepare. <laughs> Well, I taught for 17 schools and, you know, each time she'd say, do this, do that. And many times I knew just what to do. Oh, I think I went away. Oh, there I am. I'm back. Yeah, you're okay. freezing this a little bit. Hopefully oh. the internet will keep mm. going. You can keep talking. Oh, okay. Well, I was done on that yeah. topic, you're but back. I can talk about anything. 
<laughs> you so, about dogs, flowers, whatever. I can talk. I know you can. I know you can. You've got so much experience. But okay, so the Martha Poland thing, is that what led into then you uh, writing for magazines? Um, How did that come about? Well, actually, it did. Uh, I wrote for her in the very first issue. I did an article. She wanted uh, heirloom sewing on a budget. And then I just wrote for many, many, many issues after that. And then uh, along came Creative Needle, and then um, they did a photo shoot in Orlando at um, at Disney World. And so then she asked me to write for Creative Needle. So then I was writing for both of them, and then I was only writing for Creative Needle. So uh, it just the writing just kept going, you know. And I do love to write, you know, with an English ba English major and an English background. You know, the writing came easy, and I enjoy it. So. Well, Lisa says she loved watching Martha Pullen on PBS during her lunch hour. Oh. <laughs> right on the trend to watch at the Oh, my gosh. Time. We got a few comments here I want to bring up. Uh, Jane said she loved Martha, took many of her schools. So maybe Jane met you sometime there. Maybe, uh, huh? Let's see. Uh, Lori remembers your articles in Creative Needle, and so do I. Uh, and I have some of them stashed away somewhere. I should have dug those out, but... Um, those are those are uh, treasured issues because the, the magazine is no longer in publication, as are many sewing magazines. Just not yeah. being, you know, so everything sad. Pretty much mm -hmm. changed the, you know, the on online world. Um, let's see, Carla. Carla's heard of Mar Martha Pullen, but um, has never never seen her. And let's see, Kelly. Yes, Kelly is um, actually um, trained in heirloom sewing as well, and she says Martha made it okay not to be perfect and to mm -hmm. use shortcuts you could that's that's that is true i remember her talking once about if you accidentally cut a hole in your lace um you call it a vacation and <laughs> stitch it up with a zigzag stitch <laughs> and nobody knows nobody knows it better and then robin learned smocking from martha's so beautiful magazine so that smocking is uh that's a real art definitely an art so you you've You've done more of it than anybody I know, Janice. That's really uh, that's really saying something. Really, really something. So let's talk a little bit more about the magazine then. Um, I think we've got a, a picture of something that we can show that came that was originally um, published in a magazine. You tell me if I'm correct on this. Oh, I love that project. And I it's here somewhere. I was going to hang it in uh, one of the children's bedrooms here and um, I was running crazy all day and I didn't, I didn't dig it up, but that was really fun. That, that was a magazine I had. I loved it. It was a 1908, uh, hand embroidery magazine and I scanned it and printed it on silk. And then I took it, uh, and I layered it on batting and then I took embroidery designs and embroidered over it. Uh, the picture is not very clear. That was a long time ago before there was such good resolution on the cameras. Yeah. Yeah. But all that embroidery is there. And then there was some other embellishment. There's a little bow and the little girl's hair and beads on the, the, the mother's shoes. And then it was quilted. Uh, so that was really fun to do. And that was a class I taught. And then it, we didn't finish anything. It was just done. You could do whatever you wanted with it. You could frame it or you could... Joanne, didn't you say you made a print Yes, I remember taking that class. That I think that was the first class that I, that I actually had with you, but we got another project here that I know I took that class with you too, but I, I'm going to bring this one up just a little bigger for a minute, see if that helps everybody to see it just a little bit better. But um, the, the, the purple there are embroidered uh, wisteria mm -hmm. flowers. And, and I do remember we did that on a panel and then um, afterwards you told us we could do whatever we wanted with it. And I remember uh, applicating mine onto a black, velvet purse oh just making it a little little handbag that's stashed somewhere too but <laughs> um, it is the, the really interesting thing about this uh is, and i appreciate the fact that you gave us both pictures janice because you're showing that that came from uh what 1908 mm -hmm. uh, magazine well it was an embroidery lesson book and it had all the lessons for different stitches uh in the mag in the book mm -hmm. And then the actual um, fabric was uh, silk, wasn't it? Yes. And it was, you know, you can buy these. I have a bunch of them still. I, I thought I was going to do a lot more in a package. And they're meant specifically to go into a printer. Mm -hmm. And they're with a, a 
paper backing and then you print it and then you peel the backing off and do whatever you want with it. And I put it over uh, batting and then a very lightweight batting and use that as a stabilizer and then embroidered over it. And then what would be some of your tips, just out of curiosity while we're, um, while we're talking about it, for um, creating the placement of that? Like, I don't remember how we did that back then with, uh, you know, putting oh. the flowers in specific places and, you know, the little butterfly in the corner. How, how did, what, what's your recommendation for that? Well, that's back when we were using an abacus, you know, and it was so <laughs> long ago. But then we, I printed out little templates for all of those things, and you would place the template there and mark it. Now, if, if you have a wonderful mach brother machine, you know, with a scanner, and you just scan it, and then you drag the design, and you just place it where you want it, and that is the way to do it. That's the best way to do it. But without that, you still can do it the old-fashioned way, where you would just, you know, place the design in the hoop and then embroider over it, or you could hand embroider over it. I mean, there are people who do that, and it's very satisfying to do it if you've got the time. Yeah. And then, and then it's quilted, and it was quilted in a grid then, and I think still it would be best to do that quilting. Uh, Maybe not in a hoop, but you'd have to be very careful with that to not go over places you don't want it quilted. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 another um, another challenge with um, mm -hmm. adding quilts, um, embellishment. But I could even see adding trims and beads. Yes, I you know uh, you probably have done your own your share of hand beading, and uh, mm -hmm. you know there's still a time and a place for adding those accents by hand. I know not everybody here likes hand work, you know, for some people it's like, no, no way. <laughs> but, um, I wonder, I'd love to hear in the chat if anybody has actually done uh, printable transfers is, is really what it's called. And, you know, this thing never goes away. There are some mm -hmm. transfers in some of the brother machines. And yes, I, I know some different embroidery designers that are creating, um, you know, specific, printable images that go on fabric and then there are coordinating embroidery designs that are made to go on those um on those certain spots and lisa's asking do the transfer um colors hold up well what would you say about that janice well i never met there's uh something i can't think of the name of it but there's something that you can dip it in to uh stabilize it and make it more uh, you know, more durable, uh, but I never meant for these to be washed. So that was never something I had to deal with. I always wanted to do one, a picture of our house and do it for the four seasons. Not that we have four seasons in Florida, but you know, to embellish it that way. But no, I, I, can't, I have a bottle of it sitting out in the wash house right now because I thought maybe someday I would do that. But uh, there is a product that you can, and if you go online and research that, they'll tell you all about it. Yeah, in my experience, because um, I, I actually had the opportunity to test some of uh, some of this at the early stages when Brother was putting it together for one of their machines, and I tried a, a myriad of different types of fabrics. And what I found is you just have to really look at the at the the instructions on the package mm -hmm. and see what they tell you the washing requirements are. And if you follow that pretty strictly, um, you should be fine. Some of them tell you just to clean it by um, soaking it in a solution of fabric softener and water. Mm. Um, so, and then, you know, there are other ones though that can actually be laundered, but you definitely want to, you know, you want to scope that out beforehand. It's a fun technique. I highly recommend. Um, and maybe there's some here that have done, you know, photo quilts and things like that. I've seen lots of them done and done a little bit of that myself. And you just have to, you just have to test it out. And then, Certainly there is a time and a place when it's not necessary to launder it at all. It's going to be, you know, just set into a home decor item and, you know, a frame, just dust it off every once in a while and you're, and you're good to go. Um, Jackie, they, I'm going to bring this one up. Our, um, Linda says she's only done heat transfers. Yeah, heat transfers is um, another way. Um, but uh, Jackie wants to know if what you're talking about is called retain. It might be T-A-Y-N-E. I think I've seen that. I do want to mention, am I plugged in here all right? You're fine. You're fine. Uh, You're, fine. Uh, You're fine. There also is another package that you can get. It is uh, cotton. I think it's muslin. So it's not just on silk. But yeah. I, it, I think retain is the name of it. I think you're right, Jackie. 
I, um, I actually have a, a program that I did um, in the past for um, American Sewing Guild group with a bunch of tips on it. So I'll have to, to drag that out, maybe pull that out one day. Mm -hmm. We can have another fun um, discussion about it. We got a few people that have done a few things. Um, Christina says her uh, coworker made a beautiful quilt with pictures of her, of her grandson. Oh, that would be nice. And my friend Janice did a photo quilt um, for her late parents, and it came out great. I'd oh, love to see a picture of that, Janice. That would be really something to see. I'd love to. I'd love to see what everybody's whatever. Mm -hmm. But that was a fun. That was a fun class, and that is actually, I think, the very first class that I that I took with you. But then there was another one. So let me see if I can find that next picture. Yeah, oh. it was. It wasn't this exact thing, but it was. It was the same type of bag so you have a special name for that bag what is that called i a tp bag because the shape of it is like a tp okay and and you know i remember taking that i don't remember i think we used quilted fabric in the class uh -huh. that we did it in but you told me you've made countless number of these so. countless oh i couldn't count i mean 200 maybe wow and it's easy to make isn't it oh rebecca my daughter could, she could make it in 10 minutes. Someone called up and said, hey, let's go to the beach. And she said, okay, but I want to collect shells. They said, well, we'll be there in 15 minutes. She said, okay. And boy, she pulled out a zipper and some fabric and she had a bag for the for the um, shelves, you know. But oh, this is so fun. Go ahead. Yeah, I just said, oh my, that's, that's oh. really, it's amazing. You can make something that fast. <laughs> well, this took a little longer, but this was made with fiberglass um, screen wire. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the little bugs are all uh, freestanding, um, you know, bugs. And there's this summer suspended and summer made on it. And um, kids just love it. And, you know, there's so few things you can make for boys. Exactly. And this is, this boys love these things. And boy, they'll be out hunting for bugs in no time at all. That is so true, or or rocks, or leaves, oh, yes. or anything you could imagine. And you're you're absolutely right. I mean, we're going to be showing a lot of, of really, you know, pretty girly things tonight. But that, you know, I know you've done boys things as well too. We just didn't focus on that as far as um, some of the garments. But that particular project, you are right. It would work for anybody. It would be a great yes. travel bag. Uh -huh. It would be great for storing um, jewelry. You know, I love the idea of using it as a gift package and make, you know, whatever present, if you've got something small, you want to put in their candy, right? Mm -hmm. The list is endless. I'm going to have to see if we can, um, we can get you to come on here one day and um, walk through the steps to actually make that. That would be fun. I know I love that. The um, project is on the, on the brother blog. If I didn't mention before, uh, both Janice and I are brother, brand ambassadors so a lot of these projects um, are on the brother blog and i'm going to be putting together a really nice um, uh, blog post this weekend and i will have links to all of these things so that you can go directly to the uh, website uh, that brother has for the projects and you can download all the instructions so everything that that i have here where you see as seen on the Brother Stitching social blog, pay attention and I will get a uh, post made up for this weekend. If you're on my email list, you see down below the address to sign up, you will then get notified of, um, of that blog post because we can cover a little bit more in depth on there and, and show some, some resources as well. So make sure you pay attention to that. That is, that is just so cute. I just, I love that project. And when I think about, you know, the things that you've done, too, on the blog or or elsewhere in your magazine articles and, you know, all the different places that you've taught, you are big on making things that people can give as gifts. Am I correct? <laughs> oh, yes. I love giving gifts for any occasion or no occasion. You know, it's just a nice thing to do. So I, I've got a few images here. Let's go ahead and, and why don't you, as I go through them, you tell me a little bit about each each project. What what is this one um, featuring? Built-in designs or built-in lettering or what? How did you put this all together? Oh, those were just designs that I had purchased and then I added the text to it. Um, my daughter's mother-in-law uh, hosted Thanksgiving. You know, 
families always, you know, you get this holiday and you get that one. And so I did that um, as a thank you for Thanksgiving Day. And then it got to the point where, you know, I go there for Thanksgiving and she had, you know, like 14 towels on every every place that she could hang a towel. So I started going to other holidays, but that was for um, Thanksgiving, a well, hostess that, gift. That is definitely one of the best gifts that you can give to the person that has everything and doesn't need anything. Yes. Because who is going to refuse a beautiful towel? It's going to make it's going to make everything look special. So that is really neat, really, really neat. I love that. The um, lettering was that built into your machine? Uh, that was just for my machine. Yeah. And, you know, and if it doesn't match their colors, it doesn't matter. They can still dry the dishes with it, you know. And they don't feel beholden. It's not like you've given them a cut crystal dish, you know. Uh, it's just an easy peasy. Thank you and personal. That is a great point. You're absolutely right. Now, speaking of towels, though, I think you've done some other creative things with towels. Let's see. Is this one of them? <laughs> oh, yes. I love this. This is, this, this is, there's a, a little silver, you know, those little aluminum disposable pants, and that's filled with Christmas cookies. And then it's wrapped up in such a way that it made a bag. But the bag is sewn up with wash away thread. Oh. So after they untie the ribbon and it's kind of pinned together but it's really sewn together like a bag but it's pinned so that the pin makes the um it, it makes the the um the casing sort of for the ribbon okay we might have lost you for a second there so i you know i would have never water and then it comes out the dish towel yeah oh we lost you for just a minute there. So, so you're giving them the gift and sewn with the washout thread. And then are you're telling them, uh -huh. no worries. Uh, if you want to turn this into a towel, throw it in with your laundry and you'll be good to go. Right. Exactly. And then you have a dish towel. Oh, Carla's actually says she thinks she's seen that on the brother blog. Yes. Uh -huh. Carla, if you've been watching, you have seen that it is definitely on there, but again, I've got all the links for you. So we'll, put that together in a post that you can find it, find it really easy. And Clovis loves cookies. So <laughs> <laughs> you, could, um, you could do this for, you know, really anytime that idea, you know, write some message on there and bake some homemade cookies and give it to somebody as a, as a special gift. Yep. Carrie says, well, I love the towel. It's a great idea from bag to towel. Well, wait till you see the next <laughs> one, Carrie, let's bring up the, the next one here. So tell us about this one, Janice. Well, you know, with the bread machines, they're so wonderful. When the uh, pandemic hit, I thought we're going to make our own bread. So we got a bread machine and I'm the most wonderful husband in the world. And I was just too busy. I said, go ahead, make us some bread. So he did. He cranked out the bread right and left and I was giving it away all the time. So, you know, presentation is everything. I didn't see it in a Walmart bag. I thought, you know, it's got to be something nicer than that. So I got this embroidery design and I made a bag out of it, out of wash away thread. And then I had a little note with it that said, you know, it was some, I should have included the note. Anyway, it said something like, you know, this was made for you and uh, aren't you glad I didn't make you a bathing suit, you know? Uh, so just, <laughs> just dip it in the water and then you'll have a dish towel. And I've got the dish towel here, but anyway, you know what it would look like. I'm going to bring that one up full screen too for just a minute so everybody can see just how, how with the detail in that. And, you know, just do a search for um, bread embroidery designs and you're probably going to find something that's going to fit. There, there are a bunch of them. Absolutely, absolutely perfect. That is really something. I just love that idea. I would have never, ever thought about the, uh, the wash away thread. So. <laughs> and uh, Carrie says it's cute and Kelly adores this one. So, <laughs> well, I just want to um, take a minute to say thank you to everybody who is watching live. I really appreciate you being here, but I know there are probably um, some of you that are watching on the replay. So glad to have you here as well. If you would um, want to tell me you like this, I'd love it if you'd, Hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe to the Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco um, YouTube channel. And if you hit the bell for notifications, you'll know every time a new show comes out, whether it's a live show like this or a show that I have pre-recorded and put up on the channel. So thanks to everybody for, for being here and watching either live or on the replay.
We really, really appreciate having you. So anyway, Janice, I know I, I, you sent me again so many pictures and so many beautiful things, but it really got me to thinking about heirloom sewing. And we didn't, I don't think I even really asked it. Who here has, you know, done heirloom sewing, knows what it is, doesn't know what it is. You know, share your thoughts in the chat about heirloom sewing. If you've done a little bit of it or if you've thought about doing some of it or if you did it in the past and don't do it anymore. Because I think, Janice, you would agree heirloom sewing has changed in recent years, hasn't it? Oh, it certainly has. It certainly has. In the Deep South, you know, it's still very, very uh, prevalent. Uh, they still have mothers who take children all the way to church in their slips, little girls. And then as they get out of the car, then they put the dress on them so that they're not all wrinkled up. Wow. But uh, today, uh, everything has become so much more casual. And yeah. I see it in our church that, you know, little girls that come to church when in very casual, not my little Beatrice, no siree, that little girl comes dressed to the nines. Oh. I make sure of it and so does her mother. But um, one th consideration is the cost, you know, the cost of lace and uh, the heirloom fabrics and all. That's a real consideration. Uh, but um, I showed you the, the dresses, the first um, birthday dresses. Did you want yeah, to put that up yeah, now? Yeah, I've got a picture for that. I've got a picture of that. Let me, let me um, bring that up next. I see Linda says she's done a little bit of heirloom sewing. And let's see, Carla, what's Carla done? Carla is... Um, has done lace with smocking. So mm -hmm. that's good. Clovis hasn't done it yet. Um, Jane loves heirloom sewing. So we've got definitely some heirloom stitchers here. I don't, you know, I was really into it for a while myself and then just kind of, you know, fell off the wagon, shall we speak, and got into, <laughs> I fell on another wagon, you know, with, with, with machine embroidery exploding everywhere. And having so much opportunity to embellish with that, it just kind of got me away from a lot of the, you know, the more intricate sewing. But, you know, I still I still add those little touches in now and then now and then. And I love what you do because you do so much that it, that just, you know, marries it all all together. Let me just bring up a couple more comments. Connie said she did some when the girls were were little. And June says um, she's seen heirloom sewing but he has not done it. It's so beautiful. And you know, what I think is neat about it too, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, Janice, is even, even if you don't want to sew for little girls or maybe make something that you would wear on the outside, a lot of these heirloom techniques are really nice for nightwear, you know, oh, for yes. uh -huh. nightwear, loungewear, or um, undergarments where you can make pretty mm -hmm. camouflage, you know, wear with, I mean, a jacket like what I have on would be great with a, you know, an heirloom shell underneath mm -hmm. have some of that beautiful lace accent. So there are a lot of different ways that you can, that you can do it. Um, let's see, Linda. So she's monogrammed towels and pillowcases. Well, monogramming, yeah, that's another whole thing in the South, isn't it? Very, very, very common. But let's bring up those, those two dresses you were talking about and see what, um, <laughs> what you can tell us about those. Oh, the first dress. Oh, my, oh, my precious granddaughter, my first grandchild and my first granddaughter, uh, Laurel Cade, uh, she just turned 18 years old. So that dress then is now 17 years old. And, you know, I was just over the moon about having a grandchild, finally. I'd waited a long time. And it's got all the, the traditional heirloom techniques. You know, it's got the lace and the entredeau and the pin stitch and... Uh, all the embellishments, ribbon, and then I added a lot of machine embroidery, and it's got filter A and, oh, just all the stuff. So Laurel wore that, and, and she was just precious, of course. And and I loved it, and she loved it. Well, her mother loved it anyway. <laughs> Laurel didn't care. Uh, and so that was wonderful. Well, then many years later, along came um, v Vivian Rose. And for her first birthday, this is what she ended up with. And her mother didn't want so much lace, although she was very, very much in favor of, of lace. She would have worn that too, but she wanted something for Disney. So okay. th this is uh, Pima Cotton, and I managed to get the Madeira applique hem, and it's uh, it's got some some entredeau and lace down the front, and uh, there's some lace around the collar, 
but it certainly is not of the same uh, character as the other first birthday dress. So the, now Vivian just turned nine, so this is eight years old. So the difference between eight years and 17 years, you know, it, that's how the change has come about. But Vivian has worn her share of fancy dresses, but this is more like what you would have expected today. It's also, you know, the two of those side by side are, are really a good example of something else we're going to talk about in a minute um, or two. And that is the variety of different fabrics that you can choose. And mm -hmm. that really, um, just the choice of fabric can somewhat modernize the garment. Yes. You can make it easier to care for. Right. And that just, you know, puts it into a whole other other category. You got a lot of great comments coming through on the on the dresses, but Sandra says heirloom is so rewarding. Um, I think she meant to say has gotten very um, expensive. Um, she still loves smocking and, and hand embroidery, and you know, it, I think again the the dress on the the pink the pink dress with the trim down the center kind of just shows you again that you know you could buy ordinary cotton and mm -hmm. add a little bit of something you know that it has some heirloom accents down the center, a little bit of heirloom on the hem and on the collar, and you're not having to invest in really expensive Swiss laces and oh, what you you know all the entredeau joining strips and all that um, stuff that, that really is a little bit more expensive and harder, harder to get too. Well, that's so true. You really can cut the cost considerably by using uh, more contemporary fabrics and trims and get the look. And then uh, Kelly's got a great point here. She says she loves how you can use the same patterns and get such oh. different results. That is mm -hmm. oh, just uh, it, it, so, so, so true because it's just, um, you know, just that difference of adding the different trims and using different mm -hmm. colors and switching out sleeves and all those things. Mm -hmm. Did you use a lot of the same type of patterns when you were making a lot? I mean, I know you're still making them, but especially when you're doing so much for the magazines and for the schools, did you tend to repeat patterns that you had and um, switch them up a little? Sorry, I've got two very big hairy dogs. I mean, 115 pounds, 120, 125 pounds, and I've got a fan going here, and I got dog hair blowing all over me. So excuse me for that's okay. Picking the hair out of my that's yeah, real sure. life, right? That's real life. A lot of us can, <laughs> I'm, I'm fortunate that the cat tail isn't uh, whipping in my oh, face because she, yeah. likes to, <laughs> she likes to join me too. Well, that's my life here. Um, but yes, I have, uh, you know, a basic oak pattern and a bishop pattern that I use a lot. But then again, I love new patterns. I mean, I have boxes and boxes and boxes of patterns. I keep wanting to try a new pattern, you know, so I do use a lot of different ones as well. And anybody else here have boxes and boxes of patterns? This this would be the night for true confessions. I'll raise my <laughs> hands twice on that one. Let's see. We got a question from uh, Christina. Um, did you make the Disney band? So why don't you tell us a little bit how you made that? Oh, the band down the front, you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, those were Disney designs, and I just placed them in between, and I put the, um, the little buttons there for accent. That was just a piquet, piece of piquet. And then I embroidered and embellished with the, the buttons. And at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, but I put little buttons there, that kind of mimicked uh, the uh, the uh, ears at the bot oh. bottom. Yep, I can just see a touch of that. I mm -hmm. can see a touch of that. And we're, we're getting some people that are admitting, oh, good, I don't feel so alone tonight. Let's see. <laughs> Carly has boxes of patterns and lots of embroidery items. Let's see, Kelly, yeah, I can totally relate um, to your, <laughs> to the furry um, fiasco there. <laughs> and uh, Janice says she used to have a trunk full of patterns, but um, she's moved too many times. So Robin has, a, <laughs> has boxes and Jane and I are in the same, um, <laughs> same support group here. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. You know, it's just, um, it's hard to part with them when you look at, you know, oh, you know yes. you, 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 some of them just have so many memories. I have uh -huh. the first pattern that I ever bought I for a project on my own. So you, you might have the same thing. <laughs> there is a book 
uh, that I love. It's called um, Make Room for Quilts. And there's a comment in there. They, they talk about different uh, styles of houses and how they've used quilts. And one woman said her mantra is, uh, too much is seldom enough. And I think that's how I feel about fabric, laces, patterns, all of that. So too much is seldom enough. So, you know, that's been in a book. So it's okay. I think that <laughs> gives okay. us permission. Oh, we're getting lots of people with their um, sharing their sharing their pattern addiction here. <laughs> Seven drawer dressers filled with patterns. Well, now, see, this, this is the neat thing, though, and I know you would you're gonna um, you're gonna be included in this, Janice. If you if you use at least some of them, <laughs> it's all okay. And I know yes. Carrie yes. definitely definitely uses some, and uh, Carla got patterns and um, everything else. So you're right. When, um, when all of us kind of were locked up, we found that um, we were glad we had what we had when we had it. Right. And we felt so sorry for those poor women who had to go out and buy a pattern and couldn't. So. Yep. Yep. And I don't know if we may even have somebody here tonight that really got um, rejuvenated and reinterested in sewing from that time period when we were staying home and kind of, you know, looking for things to do. And um, the sewing world really exploded during that time. It did. So I'd love to know if anybody here um, started to sew more or started to sew at all from, from that um, period of time. By the way, a huge, huge owl just swooped across the pool and landed in the dogwood tree. Ooh, that was beautiful. That that is not that it matters to sewing world, but I know, but we, you know what? Most of us that are, are um, sewing enthusiasts are also animal enthusiasts. That's uh, a, a link that, that goes together. Uh, we're still getting some comments for patterns. Jane says she has friends giving um, her their patterns. They don't want, uh, I do too at times. Mm -hmm. I always, I'm always on the hunt for some of the real uh, vintage ones as well, because mm -hmm. I, I like the, the pet, just looking at the pattern envelopes. Kelly says patterns are like recipes. You need a ton of them. <laughs> yes. They're going to inspire you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Linda's got her share of them too, and she sews for others. So, yeah, if you sew for others, you know, you like to have baby patterns on hand and mm -hmm. craft patterns on hand and, you know, anything that, that you're going to be able to use. Oh, it's got another interesting comment here, Janice. Lori um, is actually a licensed Martha Pullen instructor. And has been ah. doing this for for forty years. So, kindred kindred sewing sister. There. Yes. Oh well. Yeah. All right. Now we've shown the the dresses. Now the next one is another one that is really really interesting. So let me bring that picture up. And I've actually marked them because I think if if anybody looked at these, they're not going to be able to tell which one is which. I mean, they both look like they were done on a machine. So tell us a little bit about that first one stitched by hand and then the one stitched by machine. Uh, the one on the left was done by hand uh, for my daughter who is now 44 years old. It took a very long time to do it and I was very pleased with it, but it took a very long time. And on the right is done by machine by Suzanne Hinshaw had wonderful shadow embroidery designs. And that was made for my granddaughter, Laurel. And that it took it did take a while to make the whole collar the embroidery did not take that long but uh when you look at the two i think you'd be hard pressed to, to be able to tell which was done by hand and which was done by machine yeah. so that's that's another way uh heirloom sewing has changed uh because we can do so much more in such a short period of time that is really really something i i um i would not know that that one on the left was not done by machine because I've seen designs that mimic that um, mm -hmm. you know, very closely. I think that that's really one of the interesting things, you know, you and I were talking about uh, how, how you can add, you know, embroidery to almost anything and give it that heir, heirloom look because there are so many mm -hmm. heirloom designs out there and nobody would know the difference really. No. Mm -hmm. Nobody would know the difference. Yeah. There's definitely been um uh, you know, some influence in the world too that has made people more interested in some of these things that have mm -hmm. tail and, and uh, you know, the extra trims. And it's just really, I, I, I love looking at things like this, even, mm -hmm. even if I'm not necessarily going to make it, just 
looking at it and imagining it, um, you know, the process and then seeing it uh, photographed is, is really fun, really, really fun. And Jane actually has a lot of Martha Pullen embroidery designs, which there again, um, those were perfectly made to imitate what what she had collected, right? Because she was known, mm -hmm. she's always been known for collecting antiques and then, um, you know, recreating those designs to, to be done by, by machine. I think you told me you have a, a little, a little pension for collecting antique linens, right? Want to talk oh about my goodness. I, I need a support group for that. I can tell you, I really do. Uh, for some time, I wrote a series, I did a series on in creative needle on antique textiles and using antique textiles. And, oh, I have, I have so many and I'd collected them for a long time, but then people found that I did like at the church bazaar, you know, they would, things that come in and they'd pull them aside and save them for me, you know? So I really have quite a collection and I I've used a good many of them, but, um, and, you know, who did this? And, you know, who did they do it for? Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, you just, you wonder about that. I have in the, the downstairs bathroom um, a toilet that sits on the back of the toilet. And it's been crocheted around the edge. And it's an ivory sort of edging. And at one point it changes to a darker color. And it doesn't match. And she said, oh, well, you know. And someone said, why do you use that one? I said, I love it. I love thinking, you know, she may do. Yeah. And, uh, just things right. like that. And then other things that are just absolutely perfect and just spectacular. And I just wonder of the patience and the time. And they didn't do it for money. They did it just to, to make their homes lovely or things for their children. Anyway, it always fascinates me about who did these things, you know. Right. That's why it's so important for, for you know, people that, that are making things that they're giving, especially if it's something that's, you know, a quilt and things like that, to always put that label on there. And yes. Give it a date and give it oh. a message. And, you know, you want that to be remembered because it's something that's going to be that's going to be cherished. Um, we had a question here. Let me pull pull this one up. Um, Pat wants to know, did you crochet the lace as well on that uh, collar? Oh, no, that's tatting. That was hand tatted. No, I purchased that. It was okay. beautiful. Okay, so that's just inserted in in between the the upper fabric and the and the lower fabric, right? Oh, on the right, on the right side? No, the one that's stitched by hand. Oh, the one that's stitched, it's not inserted. That's just attached. Um, it, I I don't think that was that was done so 40 years ago. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think that was just uh zigzagged on with very fine thread. I love uh, the 80 weight Madeira Katona thread. It's 80 slash two, 80 weight two ply thread. It's so fine. You can hardly see it. It just melts into the fabric. So I think that was zigzagged on. Okay. Okay. More dog here. Sorry. <laughs> there it comes. Well, uh, so that would be one of your, if I asked you what some of your favorite, um, pieces and parts are in the, in the recipe for heirloom sewing, you just um, mentioned thread. So 80, 80 weight, two ply. Yes. Uh, oh, I, we lost Janice. Hopefully we can get her back. Um, she uh, might've had a little glitch with her internet connection. And I know she's been having some issues with um, some storms down there. So, Hopefully she can um, click back on the link and, and get back in here. But while we're waiting for her, I want to um, just kind of go through um, some of the comments here. Janice says uh, the lace on the left is stunning. Yeah. You know, when we were talking about antique pieces and parts. And, you know, if you get the opportunity to get a hold of something like that, you know, don't be afraid to pull it apart. So, you know, it, that's always an option of, using just the best parts out of some of those antiques. I wonder if anybody here has done that, gone shopping for things and, and just pulled it apart. Hey, Janice is back. Yes. Hello. We lost you for a minute there. <laughs> yes. Glad to have you back. All right. We got another question for you, Janice. Um, Kelly um, wants to know what's your favorite thing to stitch or make? Great question, Kelly. Great question. What would your answer be to that, Janice? 
Hopefully you're not frozen. You look like you're, you're frozen. Well, you're all broken up, Joanne. I <laughs> could you repeat the question? It was all broken up. Sure. Um, uh, <laughs> repeat Kelly, the question for me, please. Kelly wants to know what is your favorite thing to stitch or make? Oh, baby things. I love to do baby projects. I just did something that, um, I'd like, to, if I come back again, I'd like to show you. It was uh, for a benefit for church. And um, it's just, and I'll borrow it back from the people who ended up with it, though. But baby things are just so sweet. And, you know, they're not huge. Uh, so you can, because they're not huge, you can put so much detail into them. So I like to do a whole layout of, ba uh, you know, a, a baby dress and a blanket and a bonnet and, you know, the whole nine yards. Well, I think the other thing is um, baby things are always something that you can donate to a worthy cause. Yes. So if you uh -huh. want to make them just for the love of making them mm -hmm. and then find mm -hmm. out where there's some, some need there. We're going to talk a little bit more about sewing for charity in a, in a few minutes here, but um, that's definitely, definitely something to consider. Let's see. I don't want to miss. Um, let's see. What did Janice, uh, Jane have to say? Figuring out how they are made is one of her favorite things to do with old clothing. It is fun. It's fun to see, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times I, I can't figure it out. I'm looking at them. Oh. Did a machine do this? Did a hand do this? You know, how was this even, even created? It's really, it could be, it could be tricky. So, okay. Kelly wanted to know what uh, your favorite thing um, to make. I'd like to know what some of your favorite must have tools are in the sewing room. Did you bring up, couple things to, to show us and tell us about. What oh, yes, are. I did. All right. Let's, um, tell, me, tell me what some of your favorites are. Probably the first thing would be a pin cushion. And I keep a well-stocked pin cushion by each machine. And in the pin cushion, I like to have uh, a needle that's threaded with white thread and a needle that's threaded with black thread, just for handy, quick things, you know. And then I keep an assortment. Uh, this little pin cushion is a class I taught many times, and it's a a beehive and in the center which is the opening i keep hand sewing needles there so i don't confuse them with the others and there's you know a tapestry needle and a very fine needle and all kinds of different kinds of needles and then around there just pins and uh, big safety pins and little brass it's pins a little bit oh, higher oh, for us oh, yeah okay yeah it right side up a uh, brass yeah. safety yeah. pins and uh I even keep a couple of uh, twin needles because I like to use those a lot. So they're all just handy and different machine needles. And, you know, you get to a point where you can pick one out and say, oh, that's a 60, that's a 70, that's an 80, you know, just by feel. So uh, I, I like that. And then, oh, then I keep, this is a, a, it's really a hat pin. And a dear friend made that for me, Rebecca, my uh, son's godmother. And that's good for, you know, squishing things in between. It's good for a lot of like things. A so I keep that hand. A so, like a stiletto. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. But, and I love things that somebody gave me, you know, that, that just makes it more special. So anyway, that, that's one. And then uh, another thing, I bought a set of tweezers. I use tweezers a lot. And I thought, what will I ever use this for? This is a, a long uh, pointed tweezers. And I use that a lot for picking out threads and, Ah. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, and then, the, um, you know, these, darn, I keep going the wrong direction. It's These are little, little clippy easy. things. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And, uh, of course, I keep a seam gauge handy all the time just for measuring and all that. And uh, I hate to admit it, but boy, oh, boy, a seam ripper. <laughs> you know, and, have to have that. And a good and, sharp one, right? Yes, That's and a sharp key. one. Yep. Uh, and tweezers, regular tweezers. Oh, I had to pull the pull one out. Oh, here, for when I'm seam ripping, uh, and then pulling out the threads, uh, and the double-sided tape, which is propping up the iPad. I use double-sided tape for all kinds of things, oh, though. Really, just like the kind that you would get in an office supply. Oh thing? yes, oh yes. Sure. Um, you know, like when I'm putting stable extra stabilizer down or putting fabric down in the hoop. And then okay. I put the tape behind it to hold it in place. Uh, I use it for sh and shadow when you do shadow embroidery. Um, she, re uh, Suzanne Hinshaw, recommended it highly, and I use it there. Um, I just use it for so many things. Very, very handy to have. So I keep a roll of that by each machine too. So um, I like that a lot. Very smart. Very smart. So, well, I love that pin cushion. That that was. Um, did you make that yourself? Did you actually? Make oh yeah. That? 
So, so give us one more quick look at that and, and tell us what what is it stuffed with? Just just polyfill. I taught this class 26 times, so then I, I gave up on it. I was tired of it. But it was fun because uh, this filtre by machine is really a fun thing. I don't know, is that closer there? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that looks good. And each time I taught it, we put the name of, you know, where we were. I don't know if that's straight there. Goodness, I should figure out where that camera you know, is. No, I so. never get used to this camera thing. It's always a little tricky. <laughs> well, I'm sure not used to it, apparently. Um, oh, there, there. I like the button. size of it, too. It must be the size of a, of a, a like a luncheon plate. <laughs> it's not. It's like, I think it fit in a four inch hoop. So, oh, okay. Uh, okay. So it's about that size. And I've got another one that's uh, more oblong. Uh, and on one of them, I put the back of it, I put your name on, on the back, but. But it's always important when you make a pin cushion to always have the handle here. People tend to grab a pin cushion like that and then you go, ouch, you know. Oh, that's a great so idea. Do that. that. Great. There's a there's so many great ideas all wrapped up in that thing. I love the the idea of the the pretty hat pin. Um maybe yes. some of those, you know, around the house that was inherited and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> well, that's what you do with it. And that Absolutely. is a good idea. Great idea. So those are my things there. Well, I'd like to hear a little bit about some of your favorite fabrics to stitch with, too. So I've actually got a, a picture I'm going to bring up that um, has some of the things that you told me were made out of some of your favorite fabrics. Um, mm -hmm. This ordinary cotton on that first picture, right? And that sailor. Yes. Um, yes. Little, little sailor girl dress. Yes. Just cotton, um, you know, a cotton border print. And I, I like to work with that. That's wonderful. And then the other thing, the little um, Bambi outfit, uh, that's pique. And I like that for children's clothing, something like that. Now, this is just my personal opinion, but, you know, broadcloth is not as firm as pique. And so the pique worked out so nicely for that and for embroidery, too. So yeah. that little outfit, I've got that one right here. And, and it just, it, it's got more body to it. You have the actual and, sample there? Uh-huh. Why don't you, uh, why don't you um, bring it up? Maybe we can see the detail a little bit better. Sure. Sure. Uh, Let me grab that here. Camera. Let's see. I know, you know, I would say, too, that pique is, because it's a little bit beefier, it might have a little less tendency to wrinkle. What What do you think about that, Jamie? Oh, that's true. That's, that's very true. Here's the little garment. I don't know how close I can get for it. The embroidery is sweet on this. I've always liked this. It's built into a couple of the brother machines. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And that's it's lined. Pretty good shot it's, of it. Uh huh. It's always hard to see texture on. on uh huh. And on. there are a lot of different kinds of piquet too. And this is uh, this is one of many. Hundred percent cotton most of the time. Uh huh. Right? Uh huh. Although you know, I found um, at Joanne's Fabrics of all places, they had a, a poly cotton that was very nice, but they never they've never had it again. Yeah, so, it's, uh, you know, that's why sometimes you got to buy it when you see it and you'll have it when you need right. it. Right. So I've seen some beautiful um, cotton sateen there, too, that yeah. I do a few heirloom things out of. And that's another nice fabric. That yeah. embroidered so well, too. Do you, do you know uh -huh. what you used uh, stabilizer-wise when you did that? Probably. Usually. When, I, when there's something that's uh, at all detailed, I like to do a wash away stabilizer. Brother's wash away is really nice. And if there's much detail at all, I use two layers of the wash away lightweight stabilizer. Okay. And then just dip it in and you're done with it, you know. One fun thing, although I don't think I could recommend this to anybody, it was really a hassle. Down at the hemline, I... I'm going to tell you when to stop because it... it um, pull it just a little more towards your face and the, uh, towards okay. your towards your body, and then the light won't be so bright on it. Okay, like right there. Yeah. I extracted this from the. Um, okay, is that clear? Yeah, go. Yeah, go. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's about the best we're gonna okay. get. On that. <laughs> I ex I know what that is, but I'm not sure. So describe it a little bit. It's little mushrooms and flowers that were at the bottom of the design. Uh -huh. But the problem was, I think it's uh, uh, it, it's sort of the things there at the bottom here. Although I think I took some of those yeah. out. Okay. But anyway, the problem was that the color stops were all built in 
to go all the way around and up in the top and all around. So it took forever to extract that and and just get what I wanted. But so I was determined. All right, I'm going to ask you to just be a little bit more um, descriptive on that. How did you extract it by skipping the other parts? So when you were on the machine, you would only sew that part. You're not talking yes. about taking it in software. Well, yeah, I deleted it in software. Okay, so you did delete it in software. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. but it took a yeah. long time. How each little piece yes. part and yes. disconnect but, everything. But when you really want something, you know, and then you think it really wasn't worth it. You know, it really wasn't worth it there. So that was one thing. That was one of the, the garments. But the piquet really worked out very nicely for this. I Kelly really likes it. Buy it when you see it and you'll have it when you need it. I've been saying that for a long time, but it is true. Kelly likes that saying. I'm with you, Kelly. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's bring that, that picture back up so we can see what else was on there. That little um, bonnet, which is there... Is there anything sweeter than a little baby bonnet? I mean, that is just one of those things that um, will never, ever go out of style, right? It's something oh, I think not. that is just always, always going to be in fashion mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for babies to wear. And you can make them simple or you can make them really detailed, right? Absolutely. So what was that one made out of? Uh, I... If I recall, I think that was Swiss Batiste, which I really love to work with. Uh, but that would have been just as nice with a domestic cotton Batiste. It probably would not have been as nice with uh, a blend, uh, a poly cotton blend, because the embroidery and a, a poly cotton blend with those fine stitches, it really wants to. And we lost you for just a minute there. Um... The, I will say that Parker, the more cotton or linen would be the fabric of choice. Yeah. We Okay, I'm going to ask you to repeat that, Janice, because we lost you just for a minute. So you were describing between natural fiber and poly cotton blend. Well, the poly cotton, especially when you're doing fine stitches like that, it wants to pull in on you and, and it will pucker. And so you just, it doesn't do nearly as well. Uh, than if you use a cotton fabric. And as I said, that was Swiss Batiste. But if you use, I'm pretty sure that was Swiss Batiste. But if you use a domestic cotton, that works out very nicely too. So, you know, you don't have to have the expensive stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I, I think, it, you know, I'd love to hear your experience as far as embroidering on fabrics that have polyester in them. I, you know, you're, you're, kind of logic would tell you, oh, because polyester wrinkles less, it's probably going to pucker less. But would you agree that it's really kind of the opposite? The more polyester is in there, the more chance it has for the embroidery to, to start to pucker? Absolutely. It will pucker. It will wrinkle less when it's left alone, but it's got a mind of its own and it wants to be just a certain way and you're fighting with it. So uh, I think if you're going to embroider on a uh, polyester thing. I think you need to use something like uh, Terial Magic and a lot of stabilizer and um, certainly do a practice piece, you know, yeah. a rehearsal. Yeah, those are really, really good tips. I know the other thing about the natural fibers is that you can you can iron them so much more voraciously, for lack yes. of a better word. I mean, yes. you, can just, you can keep pressing and pressing and pressing uh -huh. and with you can just have that little bit of blend in there. You have more chance for it to start getting a little bit um, beat up by the, mm -hmm. by the from, from the iron. Well, we've, we've talked about a lot of great things. we got just a, a, a few minutes more to go. So if you've um, been with us for the whole show, thanks for hanging tight here. we got just a, a few more um, things to talk about. And if you've got some uh, questions that weren't answered, please make sure that you get them in here. But the next picture I want to show is um, I asked you a question and you gave me an answer. And the question was, have you ever made anything that was, that you would consider um, a, a disaster? And you, you gave me this picture and a very ready answer to that. So you want to talk about that? This was a disaster and it broke my heart because I love this dress and it was supposed to be for Beatrice. Got it all done and went to button up the back. I can show you here. 
Uh, where is it here? Look at the back. Look yeah. at the back of this. I know you showed it to me and I had a hard time finding anything wrong with it, to be perfectly honest with you. But, you know, um, sewing, um, <laughs> sewing friends are really good at confessing their mistakes to other sewing friends. We just see. Well, I'm confessing this here. I'll tell you what. I don't think the Pope would absolve me of this. Now, let's see. How can I get it over here? Can you go on the big screen with that, Joanne? Uh, yeah. Well, actually, um, we, that's, that's as big as we can get. So that's, that's not too bad. Look at the placket. The placket goes one way and the back opening goes the other way. I still think a lot of people would not know it wasn't supposed to be like that. But <laughs> if I put this on a child, I'd walk her into church and say, look at that back. Did you see that back? It's pretty awful, don't you think? You know, Did you cover it with a big bow? I mean, that's another thing. We're always good at, at trying to find uh, ways to cover up our mistakes, too. Well, I had all, and the, the ribbon is all wrinkled here, but it's, look at this beautiful antique um, beading that I used on it. Yeah. It's, it was just, it's a gorgeous, it was the um, edging here. I used some gorgeous Pretty stuff on this. Oh, oh yeah. Where you're at, yeah. It, I can tell you put a ton of detail into that. An absolute yes, I did, but oh well. <laughs> Too bad, so sad. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, well, um, back to fabric. I got another um, question here from Lisa. She says her mom made dresses of dotted Swiss. Oh. Does that fabric still exist? That's a good question. Yes, and it's astronomically expensive. Just so expensive, but it is still around. And I've got some here. I've never made anything with it. I've wanted to, but I have not yet done that. Wow. And the and the expense is generally because it's imported. Is that correct? I think so. There is some domestic dotted uh, Swiss. It's not as nice as the imported, but it's very nice. And I've got some of both. Um, okay. But I haven't done anything with it. It would be interesting to, to mm -hmm. compare, compare the two. All right. Let's see what the next, um, the next one was. And the next one was actually... Um, I know I asked you a question, what project would you say was near perfect? And this is what you showed me. So tell me about this beautiful little tea set. <laughs> I loved making this. It's, um, this was an Alice in Wonderland tea set. And uh, I love doing tea parties with my granddaughters. And so this was uh, Alice in Wonderland. And it's got Madeira applique, which is one of my favorite heirloom techniques. And then the, it's got edging uh, with tatting on it. And it's just, it was just a fun project. And everything came out just right. And the colors are reflected in um, the tea set itself. I always try to match the tea set to the uh, embroidery. And so this was, this was the little tea set. Oh. I did another one. Uh, I've done a couple of them. But the first one that I did was, uh, I sent you some pictures of that too late, I think, to get into this. But um, well, I, to, I will so. admit, I saved some things for next time because I'm sure <laughs> okay. I like to see everybody say yes, yes in the chat. Do you want to see Janice come back and show us some more detailed things? I thought next time we could get into some very specific um, machine stitches. We had a couple comments in here on, on machines, and I thought it'd be fun to show some actual um, stitch uh -huh. holes and talk about, you know, things like wing needles and talk a little bit more about threads and a few techniques like, you know, the Madeira. Would that be called Madeira applique? Am I correct? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Madeira applique. You know, that would be fun to to see exactly how that's done. And, and so yes. maybe we could do, do something in the future with that. I yeah. love that technique. I'd love to talk about that. It's so special. It just really... Um, really makes it really special. I know you're a big fan of, of, of doing little, little tea parties with somebody special in your life. And I see, um, Vicki, Vicki loves <laughs> tea sets too. It's just one of those things that's really, um, really fun to do. And yes, I agree. Lisa, the tea set is delightful in a, in a true, a true treasure. Definitely. Um, there's a, a few comments here that I want to, um, pop up and, um, answer. Um, Janice, asked a little bit ago, how many ambassadors does brother have around the country? Well, Janice, you are definitely one of them and I am as well. Um, I don't know. Do you have any, any clue as to actual how many there are now? 
wonderful ambassadors. There are a lot of sewing specialists, but I think yeah. maybe six. It's pretty much if you go to the brother blog, most of the ones that you see on the brother blog would be under the category of of ambassador. So it's a it's it's basically um, what it means is we use the brother product. So that's what we talk about. That's what we we highlight in in our in our projects. And I know when you and I talked, you said you you have no trouble um, loving your machine, right? <laughs> I love them. I love them. you know when I have a personal blog and we're required now uh, to say you know note at the bottom by the way you know I'm a uh, brother ambassador and but I said by the way I you know I don't have to that's not something that's hard to say I really do love the product and I, I don't want to fail to mention let me um, bring this up the uh, your blog actually which again I will put that in the uh, uh, I'll put it in the show notes and I will also put it in the blog post that I write on Let's Go Sew over the weekend because a lot of these projects you can see again on Janice's blog and read the stories about them. So I definitely, definitely Thanks. Encourage, you, encourage you to do that. Let's see. We had um, somebody had commented. Vicki um, uh, said it was a great idea using an heirloom set for charity raffle baskets. So back to mm -hmm. making baby clothes. That is a, a great um great idea to do that and Lori said a lady never discusses the size of her stash <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's she, right she was prepared during the during the um, pandemic and Carla thanks for noticing this is actually a, a jacket that has oh a whole bunch of different techniques on it nothing that would show up really well on on camera but a lot of decorative stitches and some embroidery and um, made out of a, a collection of fabrics that was a uh, a handkerchief print. So there you go again. There's another little bit of, of heirloom kind mm. of mixed into the mix. Definitely. Well, I know, um, speaking of charity, uh, you are involved in doing something really, really wonderful locally. You've taught all over. I named all the different countries you've been to, but now you're kind of um, doing a little bit more in your own home base and you are doing some great things. Let me bring up the picture and then you can um, tell us a little bit about this. What well, are we in here? This is just, this is so, so much a part of my heart. Um, our dear friends, members of our church, uh, Dr. Lyle Wadsworth and his wife, Gail, who is a retired nurse, and a team, they're total, their grandson. Anyway, they started going to Ghana. It's a very long story, but anyway, they went to Ghana on a medical mission and uh, to, not just to Ghana, but way deep into the very impoverished villages. No electricity, no running water. I mean, just very, very poor. Mm -hmm. And so they treated, oh, I don't know how many people on the first trip. Well, anyway, they've gone. Now they've got it. They've got 28 wells in the villages. Anyway, they've done a lot of stuff. And it's just amazing. Well, you know, it touched our hearts so much. They've gone for four years now. But after the first year, I said, you know, what can I do? And I sure didn't want to go to Ghana. I'll tell you, um, I said, my my expertise in medicine is that, you know, a Band-Aid goes sticky side down. That's about all I know about it. Yeah. And to me, the best use of a needle is for sewing, you know. So I didn't want to do anything about with that. But I said, by the way, um, what can I do? And I said, well, these children are coming in not very well dressed, you know. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty much naked until, you know, three or four. So I said, well, sewing, we can sew. So I thought, you know what? I've got all this fabric. I can get rid of my fabric stash and we'll sew up clothes for them. So I found a wonderful pattern on five berries and I traced off patterns in all sizes and I took them to church and I carried in my fabric and we started sewing. And, we, and I got shorts patterns and I traced those off. But lo and behold... Um, the bane of my existence, all these wonderful ladies at church said, hey, I got fabric, I got fabric, I got fabric. Well, I think we've got enough fabric now to clothe every child in Africa. But uh, we started sewing, and the first, we, anyway, we sent upwards of 300 garments the first couple of years. Last year, uh, because of COVID and all, we only saw, sent about 200-some garments. But this is these are some of the children that... Um, it, wearing some of the, the little dresses that we sent. We sent shorts also for the boys, uh, but the boys weren't crazy about putting on the shorts and showing them off, you know, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, but the girls sure look happy. I love they, some, 
um, it, it looks to me like some of your, your sewing friends um, that you're working with made some uh, head treatments as well to accent and go with the dresses. Is that right? Well, we wanted to make headbands and it said, no, they shave their heads because they, they don't, they can't deal with the hair. So we bought little headbands and hair bows for each of them. So every child got a headband with hair bow and, um, or, and then if they had pockets, um, well, anyway, the boys got shorts and we had little ring lights, you know, or little trucks to go in them. And, uh, oh, Ginny, this wonderful gal, the little ones, the little boys couldn't have the ring lights because if they're under three, they could choke on them. So Ginny went out and bought a ton of little sunglasses, wrap around sunglasses for them. So every child got just, not just a garment, but they got some extra thing, you know. So it was just heartwarming. And the, they had to get the police there when they were handing them out because people came from all the villages and they had far more children than they had garments. And that just broke your heart, you know, to have to say, sorry, you know, nothing for you. And they had to go away. But it's a heartwarming, wonderful project. And uh, the ladies just so and so and so and... Anyway, well, it's just wonderful. So many people, just like you know, my friend Carrie here is she is a sewing ministry makes, and I've seen some of her. I've seen some of your pictures, Carrie, and you know, it really. I think for a lot of us that so really have a heart for for helping others in in some way, and you know, sometimes you kind of think, well, you can't do everything for everybody, but you can do something for somebody. And exactly. That, that's really what you need to what you need to focus on. Yeah, it's really. Um, that is just a great thing. June says uh, her sewing group did a similar project when her daughter went to Guatemala. And, you know, you just don't know the lives that you've touched. It's, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to sew in order to um, uh, make somebody else's life better. Right. Oh, it is. It's so heartwarming. And, you know, uh, the comments we've had uh, for some people uh, and one time we had uh, panties, you know, packages of underwear for the older girls. And they said it made them feel safer from rape and that sort of thing uh, yeah. because they had underwear, you know. And and so, you know, it, it's doing something. Yeah. It's it may not save the world, but it's something, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, so. it's just been a joy to um, spend this time with you and see all that you're doing and seeing you share your love of sewing with with, you made a lot of new friends tonight. I know you got a lot of friends oh, already, but you made a lot of a lot of new friends, and we'll definitely, definitely um, have to do this again. We're getting a lot of a lot of great comments, and everybody has really, really enjoyed this. So, thank you so much, Janice. We will keep in touch. Thank you. And I enjoyed we'll it. Definitely, definitely do this again. So, I wish you all a world full of pretty stitches. Until next. Thank time. you all. Happy sewing. Goodbye. Bye. -bye.